All right. Happy Friday, everybody. I apologize that I'm not there, but some life things uh, came up. So uh, I decided to make a recording myself. Uh, so I'm still with you just from afar. And I hope all the uh, computer audio and everything is working just fine. It's been a while since I've been doing the recording thing. We're going to be working with this sheet that we picked up and started on. It was the lesson on entropy, spontaneity, and Gibbs free energy. And um, we got all the way through here. After you guys do this, um, I'm going to ask, have you do some practice quiz questions, and then I'm going to have you do a um, quiz on um, Albert.io just to kind of see if you are understanding things. So I have an idea of what we need to go over on um, Monday. And so we're going to go through this. Um, you guys are going to take some notes, hopefully learn some things. And then after we're done with that, you will do the um, practice quiz and you feel, feel free to work on that together. Um, and then go ahead and uh, do the quiz in Albert.io. And please just make sure you guys have that done by um, by Sunday night so that I can see uh, what I need to plan for Monday morning. And then Monday, we'll really kind of kick off AP review um, now that we're through the vast, vast majority of the AP material. So um, if you guys remember, we were identifying um, delta G. We were trying to identify the sign of delta G, which means if delta G is negative, the reaction is thermodynamically favorable, aka spontaneous. And uh, when delta H is negative, when the reaction is exothermic and you're gaining entropy, the reaction will always be spontaneous. Um, the opposite would be true too. For an endothermic reaction that's losing entry, entropy, it will always be non-thermodynamically favorable or non-spontaneous. Um, for something like ice melting, which is endothermic um, and gaining entropy, then um, it depends on the temperature. And in this case here, we can see it's um, favorable during at high temperatures because this is maximized. This term here, this T delta S is maximized under high temperatures. And so it's more likely to give us a negative delta G, which is Gibbs free energy. For something that is the opposite of a combustion reaction, like here, we know delta H is positive and we know that delta S, we can see that entropy is decreasing. And so in this particular case, we know delta G would be positive. It's not even dependent on temperature. There's no way a positive minus a negative can give us anything but a positive delta G. So we, G, so we know that's always non-thermodynamically favorable. So what I'd like you to do is um, for each of these, uh, we're going to go ahead and um, just think about what are the signs um, of delta H and delta S and then the resulting um, delta G. So just for instance here, um, go ahead and if you want to pause the video and fill out the delta H and the delta S, and then we'll talk about the delta G. So if you're pausing, go for it. And if you're back, that's right. So this first one is a positive delta H and a positive delta S. And so I'm going to put TD. TD is just going to mean temperature dependent. And then I'm going to put that this one, in this case, if it's a plus plus, it's if you think about it either mathematically or just reasonably, a ice going from solid to liquid, that's going to be favored at high temperatures. Uh, it's going to be favored. I'm going to put favored at arrow up high temps. Okay. Um, this next one here is going to be minus minus. It's uh, H2O gas going to liquid. So it's going to be temperature dependent, um, but it's going to be the opposite where it's going to be favored at low temps. So anytime we have a plus plus or a minus minus for your delta H and your um, delta S, then it is going to be temperature dependent, but make sure you understand whether it's favored at high temps or low temps. And you can either do that logically by looking at what's taking place, or you can do it by thinking about it from a mathematical perspective using this equation up here. Okay. This next one is uh, another combustion reaction. So it's a minus gaining entropy. It's exothermic and gaining entropy. And so that's always going to be minus or thermodynamically favorable, aka spontaneous. 
The next example we get, we get a plus an endothermic reaction that is losing entropy. And so we know that that's always going to be a plus for the uh, Gibbs free energy, which means not thermodynamically favorable. And then for the final one here, we get a plus, plus, and just like that A, that means it's gonna be temperature dependent and then favored at high temperatures. Favored at high temps. Okay. So let's go ahead and just do a few practice ones here. Um, let's look at number six. It says balance the reaction and predict the, predict the spontaneity. Well, our balanced reaction doesn't actually really matter for predicting the spontaneity, um, but it gives us the delta H of the reaction. It also gives us the delta uh, S of the reaction. Um, well, what we know is, so this one is certainly going to be temperature dependent. It's probably going to be favorable at low temperatures um, because we have this minus minus relationship. Um, and so let's go ahead and see. And we know, well, let's just write out the, the equation here. So we know that um, if we're solving for Gibbs free energy, delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. Your temperature always has to be in Kelvin for this. And then also notice that delta S is in joules per Kelvin and then delta H is in kilojoules. And so we always have to convert the delta S value into kilojoules. And so in this particular case, we get delta G is equal to negative 802.3 kilojoules minus, I'm gonna move the decimal place over three times to give myself 0 0.0052 kilojoules per Kelvin. And actually, Probably should have written the temperature term first times we're at predicting it at 100 degrees celsius so times 100 in kelvin and you can see that that means that if you think about it as this value goes up it's more likely the delta g becomes more negative and so this is going to be something that is um that we can say is um is favored at higher temperatures um and um you can go ahead and do this map and see what you get. If your delta G is negative, then it's spontaneous at that temperature. If it's positive, then it's not spontaneous. So let's look at number seven here. Number seven, it says a student observes a process to be spontaneous, which of the following must be true. Well, it might be exothermic. Um, the entropy of the system might increase. It might decrease. We really don't know. The only thing we could say for sure, if the reaction is spontaneous, that means your delta G is negative um all of the other things it depends on if it's we're talking about entropy it depends on the enthalpy and we're talking about enthalpy it depends on the entropy all right so here we just have some practice calculation ones and i might do a maybe a um, couple of these with you but then i'll let you go ahead and do the rest so this just says calculate the change in free energy so we're just doing delta g for this particular reaction um, and so it equals delta H, which is minus 566.0 kilojoules, minus, it says, at 298 Kelvin, so minus 298 Kelvin times, I'm going to move that decimal place over three times, 0.1736 kilojoules per Kelvin. And go ahead and put that into your calculator and see if you, in fact, get that value right there, negative 514, which that would mean it's thermodynamically favorable. Okay, the other type of question you might get is, at what temperature is the system at equilibrium? Systems are at equilibrium when, at equilibrium, at equilibrium, um, delta G is equal to zero. Um, and so let me go ahead and just, say a couple of things about that. So that means what temperature is the system at equilibrium. So that means we're going to set our delta G at zero is equal to our delta H minus T delta S. And so we have to solve for temperature. And when we solve for temperature, we can rearrange this equation. We can add delta T delta S to the other side and we can get that temperature is equal to delta H over delta S. If you plug in the values, um, then we can figure out that our temperature is 3,260. And I'm just plugging in the values 
for delta H and then delta S in kilojoules per Kelvin. Okay, I'm going to let you go ahead and give number 9 and 10 and 11 and even 12. At least do a couple of those. I'd say do at least two out of those uh, uh, four. Just so you get practice doing this. And then once you're done with that, we'll go ahead and look at the next topic, which uh, I'm going to teach this topic in the context of an AP FRQ. So on your AP um, equation sheet, um, you are given this equation, which tells you that the standard entropies is the, or if you have, if you want to calculate, sorry, the entropy um, change in a reaction, we can take the sum of the standard entropies of the products minus the sum of the standard entropies for the reactants a lot like heats of formation. And from that, we can get the change in entropy of the reaction, okay? The other equation you're given on the equation sheet is that for, if you're given the standard free energies, you can calculate the delta G, the Gibbs free energy change for a reaction, if you are given um, the standard Gibbs free energies of formation, of the products minus, we wanna multiply things by moles when we're doing these calculations, the change in standard energy formation of the reactants. It's a lot like heats of formation, except we would just be using delta G and S values in this particular case. And so what this FRQ asks you to do are a few things. And I'm gonna ask you to do A, B, C, D, and then we'll all look at the answer to E together. But first thing it says, determine delta H of this reaction. And you're given for this reaction up here, and you're given um, two reactions. You have to use Hess's law, which is where you flip and multiply if need be, um, reactions um, to get the delta H for this overall reaction. And then the second thing that we're going to do is we're then going to figure out the delta S for the reaction um, using these standard entropies and using this new formula up here, okay? And make sure we multiply by the coefficient um, given the moles in the reaction. And the last thing says we're going to calculate delta G for that reaction. And that's where we just um, plug it in to our delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And we have already figured out our delta S in that part and our delta H in that part. And then we can figure out our last one. And then just we're stating whether it's spontaneous or not. We have to justify that using the value of G. So go ahead and, um, and just don't fill out E yet, but I'll go ahead and look at that. So go ahead and um, pause and see if you can fill out this FRQ. And when you come back, we'll look at the answer. Go ahead and pause. Okay, you pause. Okay, and now we're back and let's go ahead and just look at the answer for this. Okay, so here's what we're doing in part one. In part one, um, there are kind of two ways you could have approached it, but like I said, I would probably just, I probably would have personally used Hess's law, but you actually could have used these formation equations um, and you get your delta H for the reaction. And then we figure out our delta S's using the values in the tables here. And remember that for this particular one, it's it's always uh, products minus the reactants. And I had to multiply this second value by one half to match the coefficients in the balanced equation. And then, and that's what I got for my delta S value. And then I figured out my delta G um, using our uh, equation that we just looked at. And then pause and look at any of these. And we'd say, yes, the reaction is spontaneous because it's a negative value. And then the last thing we're doing is we're actually converting, which I didn't have you do, because we'll cover this more on Monday, is we're actually converting delta G um, into a K. And we're given on our equation sheet that delta G and K have this relationship. Um, and so we have to rearrange the equation and then we have to solve for K, which here's the work for that. And go ahead and look at that. And basically it tells you, oh, delta G is very negative. So that means K is really, really big 
and the forward reaction is really, really favored. So all of this stuff is related. Thermodynamics and equilibrium, everything in chemistry is connected. What I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to go ahead and let me pull the other sheet up here. I'd like you to go ahead and do a couple of things. The first thing I'd like you to do is this practice quiz. And like I said, feel free to do this with other people. Just want to note that in number two here, it says what the end, it gives you the enthalpy of vaporization. So that's pretty much the energy to go from a liquid to a gas. And it says calculate the entropy change for methanol going from a liquid to a vapor. So that happens at its um, boiling point, which they give you at 64.2 degrees Celsius. And your delta G for this one is basically zero because that's the temperature at which the reaction becomes spontaneous. Okay. Um, this is one similar to that we just did here. Um, and I'm just trying to look through here and see if there's anything else. I think you should be able to answer just about everything else. The one that is just a little bit weird is um, this one. It says, for which of the following would delta G not be zero? And so the heat of formation of a substance in its standard state, just like the heat of formation, is zero. So there's one substance here that's not in its standard state. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Remember, bromine is a liquid in its standard state at room temperature. And so that's the one you might not have an answer for. So go ahead and take your time and do this practice quiz. Uh, feel free to do it with a friend. Make sure that you understand everything. And when you come back, check on Google Classroom for the answers. It will just say answer to um, entropy and free energy practice quiz. And then once you've checked that out, then what I would like you to do is to um, go ahead and give the quiz a shot. Um, it's just a, I, it's going to be between 10 and 15 questions on these very topics right here, and that'll be on albert.io. And then come with questions that you might have on Monday. I think that's it. Hopefully this video um, helped, and I'll see you guys soon. The only topic we have left now to cover is uh, electrochemistry. See you guys on Monday. Bye.